Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian, and it is indeed a great pleasure to be sitting here with you doing Horse Center for all of our Horse Center fans. And and, and I, I've seen a bunch of them at Saratoga recently and spent some time with them. So uh, uh, thank you again, all you Horse Center fans. Yeah, there we go. Way, way to start the show, Matt. I love it. And uh, let's talk real quick about what we saw last week, uh, Jim Dandy, fierceness. We saw the real fierceness. Uh, put on a pretty impressive performance in winning the Jim Dandy. Yeah, absolutely. I was glad. Uh, I was glad to see that. I was glad to uh, for to see fierceness get a little bit of redemption to all of those people or who were so fast to uh, to discount him and and the the great things that he's done so far. And it just makes uh, the three year old race down the road even more interesting. That's right. Uh, four big races out of seven starts, uh, fierceness. So, you know, the, the the races he wins, he's been running impressively. Jim Dandy added to the list. I'm not sure that he'll run in the Travers. Uh, Pletcher, Rapoli, both talking about more time. Uh, homebred, uh, not running too much more. We'll see. Uh, but for now, fierceness looked good. Sierra Leone uh, didn't run a bad race again. But a third straight loss, Matt. Uh, people are down on Sierra Leone after three straight losses. I thought he ran well, and he and he was more behaved down the stretch. I still think he's a driver's threat. Yeah, I do too, Brian. And again, uh, I'm not going to uh, start beating up on Sierra Leone. Uh, uh, he runs well every race. He just hasn't gotten a win lately. He's won a ton of money and, and uh, fantastic breeding, et cetera. You know, we'll see. He's going to have his day. He'll have his say. I, I, I like that too, Matt. And and lastly, let's uh, tip our tip our hats. We're not wearing hats, of course. Here, if you're watching, but if we had hats, we'd be tipping them out to the chosen Vron. The chosen Vron is a winning machine. I, I think. I think unless something happens in probably one more start between the Breeders' uh, now and the Breeders' Cup, I think we have our Breeders' Cup sprint favorite. The chosen Vron. I, I believe he's won one race. In, in, in a few moons now, Matt, uh, the chosen Ron, the only race I can think of him losing recently was last year's Breeders' Cup. He might be even better this year. Yeah, uh, the uh, horse that's great for racing, uh, man, he's just a winning machine. A winning machine and a heck of a sprinter. All right, Matt, let's talk about heck of a horses in the Whitney. I was very pleased to see that we drew 12 horses to Saratoga for this grade one, $1 million Whitney. The Whitney's a big race, but it doesn't always have big fields. So it's nice to see a big field for the Whitney, 12 horses. That's a good thing. Yeah, I was I was absolutely surprised, uh, uh, Brian, that there were 12 because I was, you know, the early talk of the field, I was looking at maybe eight at the most. Yeah, yeah, we we got we got the big horse, we got the favorite national treasure, but we got a lot of interesting horses surrounding him. Let's start from the rail out, Matt. Post time, uh, he's never been out of the money in his career. He's won eight out of eleven. Uh, Brittany Russell trains his son of Frosted, and he's been doing very good things for a few years now. Um, he's never been nine furlongs, and uh, this is a tough spot to try nine furlongs for the first time. Yeah, it sure is, and I made and I noticed that also about the nine furlongs. He has won around two turns though already, and and boy, uh, eight out of nine wins, mostly, uh, mostly in Maryland before his last two races, which were in New York, uh, uh, second in the Westchester, prepping for the Met Mile, and and a very good second place in the Met Mile behind National Treasure. But yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, extra eighth of a mile uh, uh, certainly is a big question. Yeah, so is the field. Uh, he, a very good second in the Met Mile. However, he was well behind the winner. He did rally up for second, though, in that great one Met Mile, which was at Saratoga this year, as you know. Number two, Disarm. Uh, last We saw him last year. Disarm, the son of Gunrunner, Matt, was a good second in the Travers, but his two races this year have been – uh, meh. Yeah, I like that adjective that you use there. Uh, 
uh, if anybody needs translation, um, I would say, yeah, he's just not as good as he was uh, as he was last year when he uh, also won the Matt win. He was fourth in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, um, last two races just uh, just has not been as good. He did win an allowance at Churchill Downs, but that's not going to be enough at this, against this field. Yeah, the, the allowance was pretty slow. And then, uh, of course, the Stephen Foster was not a very good performance for Disarm. Two races in, he doesn't look like he fits with this bunch right now. But if he pops up to his best, maybe. Maybe Disarm is a horse you can play here. Uh, all right, before we talk about the favorite uh, national treasure, the clear favorite national treasure, let's take a look at this time form U.S. pace projector. There he is, Matt, number three, national treasure, the favorite trained by Bob Baffert out there on the lead. It does say fast pace on the pace projector, but also there's no one right next to him on this fast pace. Yeah, I, 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 I see that. But, you know, in my mind, uh, National Treasure is not a must-have-the-lead kind of horse. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. But, of course, National Treasure is the top-ranked thoroughbred in the country uh, 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 right now, and deservedly so. That Met Mile victory was very impressive by uh, six lengths or so uh, to go with his victory in the Pegasus World Cup. He is without question the horse to beat and probably a pretty heavy favorite. Yeah, I, I think he's a heavy favorite as well. Matt, uh, I, I wrote an article at the end of last year. I think National Treasure is a horse who wants to be out there, who wants to not be rated at all, wants to be out in uh, free running. And I think this year we've seen it with those wire-to-wire -wire wins in the Pegasus World Cup. And of course, last time in the Met Mile, he also won the Preakness on the front end as a three-year-old. A great race in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile where he was just nipped by the Horse of the Year, Cody's Wish. A deserving favorite. I expect him out there. Uh, should be, as we see here on the Time Form U.S. Pace Projector, a pretty solid early pace in the nine furlong Whitney. Number four is Warrior Johnny, Matt. And Warrior Johnny's a five-year-old, basically an allowance horse. But if you just look at the last race, the last race was an allowance race at Saratoga, but it was impressive and fast. Yep, a Saratoga allowance victory. Uh, um, but let, let's go, get down to the brass tacks with uh, Warrior Johnny. He's a non-stakes winner at this point. And again, like we've already said, this is an awfully tough field to try and become one. Yeah, Phil Bauer has him moving in the right direction, you'd have to say, after that last one, but clearly a test of class now for Warrior Johnny. Uh, number five, uh, second choice on the morning line is first mission. First mission, impressive, Matt, winning the Essex and the Ali Sheba. Uh, but he faded last time as a clear favorite, a heavy favorite in the Stephen Foster. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Um, uh, uh, didn't get the result that he'd gotten in, in his prior races, but uh, maybe a little surprising. He was racing on the lead in the Foster, and, and he doesn't always do that. Yeah, he's a horse with good tactical speed. It'll be interesting to see in this field with a projected pretty fast pace and, of course, a very fast heavy favorite. Uh, what first mission will do early. But uh, yeah, he he has uh, come from a little bit off the pace in his uh, big wins and first mission uh, will be looking to get back to a better performance after finishing fourth last time for trainer Brad Cox in the Stephen Foster. Uh, number six, Matt, we, we got a few of these horses, uh, hard hitters. Antonio Sano has Il Miracola in the field. Il, Il Miracola has been in a lot of big races the last couple of years. He hasn't won many, uh, but he's run a lot of good races. Uh, third in the Gulfstream Park Mile, first in the Ghost Zapper, third last time in the Alasheba, got a little time off, and now he comes in here, a fresher horse, uh, another horse I think you can't completely throw out if we're talking exotics as a long shot. Yep, absolutely. He's a warrior, well, has run some good races, hit the board a whole bunch of times, uh, uh, but uh, one thing we can say about this Whitney field, as interesting as it is, and full field of 12, there are only a couple of horses that are actually grade one winners. Yeah, that's true. Uh, number seven, Krupi is not one of them, 
although he did win the Suburban two starts back. I, I, I struggle to put a Todd Pletcher trained Irad Ortiz Jr. Uh, horse at such big odds here. And, and I saw the morning line come out since I did these odds, and he's not as high as I have him. But I tell you what, the Suburban was not great horses. Um, he's never beaten quite this kind. I, I think I probably overdid it with the 30 to 1, uh, but he was beaten uh, badly last time in the 11 furlong Brooklyn. Yeah, maybe, maybe not uh, uh, the exact number, but but he's going to be one of the bigger prices in this uh, in this large field, uh, you know, and and an interesting horse for Todd Pletcher, who's got three in the Whitney field. Uh, took him a long time to break his maiden this croupy, uh, but since then he's turned into a uh, into a nice stakes horse again. Though we're talking about this particular Whitney field. Yeah, and one thing about Krupe, he really has no speed. And uh, coming out of a, a late-running, distant second-place finish at 11 furlongs, I wonder just how far back uh, Krupe will be early in this nine furlong Krupe. Uh, nine furlong Whitney is Krupe. Uh, I mentioned about Il Miller Cola. We'd have to say Tumba Rumba is a hard hitter. This is Brian Lynch trainee, son of Oscar Performance, is actually a Louisiana bred, and he, he's very consistent in that. Uh, he comes into this race off three straight solid second place stakes performances. Yeah, and another one uh, who's uh, cashed a lot of nice checks. Another one that's a uh, that's a Grade Three winner. He won the Fred Hooper at Gulfstream Park back in January. Um, but uh, uh, he's gonna he will be a deserving long shot in this field. Yeah, number nine is interesting. Number nine, I, I have a, a, a third choice here on our horse center odds for the Whitney. I also saw the morning line. Bright Future is the third choice. Javier Castellano, another one of the Pletcher horses. Um, one of the reasons he's interesting, Matt, is he was two for two last summer at Saratoga. Yes, and one of those uh, wins was uh, the Go the Jockey Club Gold Cup, which was run at saratoga last year and will also be will be uh this year giving him a grade one victory and making him one of those grade one winners in this field uh he was in he was in really good form um and that and the jockey club victory led him to the breeders cup classic where he finished in sixth place so uh you know was it time for a break for that horse was that competition just too tough um, we'll see. I really did like his return race for 2024 with a victory in the Salvatore Mile at uh, uh, Monmouth Park. That's the kind of race that you can build on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I actually kind of liked his Breeders' Cup Classic where he made up ground and was beaten less than four lengths. Uh, despite finishing six when he went out to California as a lightly raced a four-year-old last uh, fall. The son of Curlin uh, has potential, and, and he has a good running style. I think nine furlongs fits. I, too, liked his Salvatore Mile return where he just swooped by and, and, and won nicely down the lane. Bright future, an interesting horse in here. One of my favorite horses in training, Matt, is Skippy Longstocking. You mentioned the lack of grade one winners in the Whitney, and Skippy fits that bill because he has never won a grade one race. He's run well in grade one races before. Uh, he's won six, I believe it's six graded stakes. So we're talking about a really nice horse to win six graded stakes races. Coming off a, I don't know if you call it a disappointing third in the Stephen Foster, but honestly, I was hoping for a little bit better that day at Churchill Downs. Yeah, but, you know, hey, Brian, he's won a boatload of money uh, in his career and is the leading horse in this field in terms of number of victories in his career. I think it's a total of eight. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I think six of them are great stakes. Uh, a nice horse. Uh, the next horse on the list, Matt, is a horse that I wrote about a long time ago. I, I've always loved the potential of Arthur's Ride. He's just not stayed healthy. Arthur's Ride is a son of Tappet, a well-bred son of Tappet for trainer Bill Mott. Um, he's come back this year healthier, and he's won two big allowance races, one earlier this year at Gulfstream Park, one last time at Saratoga. In between, he did absolutely nothing on a sloppy track. Now, I I've been waiting for him to be healthy and, and to get a shot. 
And wow, did they find a tough place to get that shot in the Whitney. But I think Arthur Arthur's ride has a lot of speed and he's a very talented horse. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Brian. Uh, he's a Florida bred. Um, that, but that last race, Brian, at, uh, uh, at Saratoga, they were going a mile and a quarter, I think, in that race. But he blitzed that field uh, go, uh, by, by 12 lengths or so. And, and, and recorded a really, really high speed figure. Uh, some of that might have been due to the distance of the race, but he is the, the most lightly raced horse in the field. And like you said, uh, picked a heck of a race to uh, uh, make his stakes debut in. Yeah, there you see him uh, maybe as one of the main challengers early to National Treasures early lead, and according to the Time Form U.S. Pace Projector. Matt, the last horse on the list is Charge It. Uh, he showed potential. Uh, big win in the Dwyer a couple years ago. Nice win in the Suburban last year, but he's never got it done in a big race. And uh, his, his races this year just don't look like he's about to pop up and run a big race on Saturday against this field. Yep, I agree. Uh Horse has always been a little bit of a head scratcher and and disappointment. That's charge it, and that's the field for the Whitney. Twelve of them, uh, very interesting. Grade one, one million dollar race. It's only one of three Grade one races at Saratoga. Big card, another big card Saturday at Saratoga. Uh, that'll be later in the card, uh, race eleven. But a little earlier in the card is race seven. Actually, race seven and race eight are both Grade one races. Grade eight is uh, the race eight is the test, a shorter field of three year old sprinting fillies. We decided to look at the bigger field, the Saratoga Derby, a little bit bigger field, a, a field of eight, but it's an interesting field of eight in this grade one turf race. Three year olds going a mile and three sixteenths, $600,000. Matt, you ready to uh, start from the rail out? Sure, let's go. Yeah, an interesting field of, of international horses and Americans. That's right. That's right. We like to see that in these big turf races. Uh, the only one that I, I really probably pr feel pretty safe throwing out is the horse on the rail. Izzy Doro, though, does have speed, gets stormies, uh, a sonic gets stormy. They, they are sometimes very uh, brave when they get the lead to themselves. I, I don't know if he gets the lead to himself here uh, coming off a of fourth. At Monmouth Park, he looks like the one big long shot in the field. But I guess if they leave him completely alone for too long, who knows? Who knows? We've seen that happen plenty of times on the turf. But yeah, uh, for Izzy Doro, I love that name. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a tough spot. He was an allowance winner uh, earlier in the year at the Keeneland spring meeting. But, you know, he's, excuse me, she has not competed no he excuse me i'm all messed up here um has not competed well uh at this kind of level yeah yeah he he is a long shot and i think his only chance is if they do leave him alone for a little while on the lead but i'm not even certain that he'll have an easy lead in, in here because there are some other horses who are capable of being out there and one of them is the two uh the two is actually the second choice on the tracks morning line, but I'm as the third choice. This is a Shug McGahee trained son of twirling candy. Uh, he's been good on the grass, Matt. Uh, he's five times out of six races, first or second. The only one time he wasn't was a pretty good performance with a little bit of trouble in the American turf. Last time he got uh, a little bit easier in the Audubon stakes at Churchill Downs as well. As well and uh, he dominated that day. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, he's a contain, uh, is certainly a contender in here, but uh, uh, the Europeans seem to be uh, formidable. The Europeans seem to be formidable, and, and they might be the two favorites. I, I think I might have that right with the next two horses uh, on the list. But anyway, getting back to Cugino, 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 Cugino. Um, interesting that Flavian Pratt wrote him to that easy stakes win at Churchill Downs last time. Flavian Pratt will uh, stick with White Palomino. Um, that's a Chad Brown horse, so you can't 
blame Pratt for choosing the brown horse, but interesting nonetheless that Pratt would uh, get on get off him after that big win at Churchill Downs. Number three is one of the other European horses, although Legend of Time has been running in America. Matt, this is the son of See the Stars, trainer Charlie Appleby. Uh, Appleby, uh, of course, has done some good things the last uh, oh, five years or so on the turf at Saratoga and all of America. Yeah, and this year, uh, Charlie Appleby has been doing things a little bit differently. He has a string of horses stabled uh, uh, right outside the Saratoga backstretch at the uh, famous Green Tree Farm, which is owned by Godolphin. Um, I think that that was a fantastic move by uh, Appleby to have these horses acclimated and spending the summer uh, here in America, not having to... Uh, ship back and forth legend of time was the winner of of the penine ridge which was a really strong field uh earlier in the year last time out i was at aqueduct for uh for the belmont uh for the belmont derby and, and let me tell you brian legend of time was on the rail going down the stretch with absolutely no place to go the entire stretch run uh rider i think it was william buick eventually just kind of eased up on the horse because he knew he couldn't get through still managed to 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 finish third after the race charlie appleby said we just had nowhere to go and, and we'll live to fight another day let me tell you i think that's going to be true in the saratoga derby yeah, Legend of Time, after a kind of a disappointing fifth place uh, finish in the American turf, those last two races, he's gotten bet. Listen, he's gotten bet in all three of them. So I, I think he will probably be one of the two favorites in here. But uh, yeah, it, it, was a, uh, it, was, it was a no room to go. It was a no pace race last, uh, last time in the Belmont Derby. And then uh, Legend of Time certainly lacked running room down the stretch of that Belmont Derby. So he gets another shot in here, uh, a big threat. The the other horse who is uh, likely to vie for favoritism or very well could be the favorite is the Aiden O'Brien uh, runner coming from Europe. He hasn't run in America yet. Uh, Diego Velasquez will be ridden by Ryan Moore here, Matt. And he, he's had a few on and off uh, races over in Europe, but uh, he has more class of any of the horses that have run in Europe in Europe, and um, uh, some of those races over there were big, including last time where he was a big winner in Ireland. The big winner in a group three in Ireland by uh, seven lengths or so. That's got to make uh, this guy dangerous, shipping over for Aiden O'Brien. Yeah, and, and he was also a, a group two winner as a two-year-old in Ireland. And he was uh, beaten only one length in the French Guineas early this year. Diego Velasquez, I think, is a classy, classy three-year-old coming over for the first time to America for the Saratoga Derby. Number five, deterministic, Matt. Uh, uh, at one point, I think I think he was a uh, high on the Derby lists, this son of Liam's map was after his Gotham win, but disappointed in the Wood Memorial, disappointed in the Peter Pan, made his turf debut for trainer Christophe Clement last time uh, with a good run in the Manila. Uh, now I think he finds a tougher turf spot this time. Yeah, certainly a tougher turf spot. It was a good second in the Manila, and maybe they have found the right spot with the terministic right spot, meaning on the grass. I don't know about necessarily this particular field. Yeah, and let's take a look now at the time form U.S. pace projector out of this turf race. Um, there's no fast pace. There's no slow pace button to worry about here. But they're they're saying that there's probably a lot of horses that could be on or near the lead. Deterministic, you see right there behind, as well as Legend of Time. Maybe that's not a good thing for Legend of Time to be right there behind again uh, with uh, Izzy Dioro, the horse I would expect to be on the lead. Gugino and White Palomino, who we, ha we haven't talked about. So they're they're looking at a moderate pace with a lot of horses pretty cl close to that lead. Let's see if the one splits it up a little bit. I, I agree with you on deterministic. I, I think the um, Liam's map 
uh, is a sire that can can uh, have turf horses, just as uh, dirt horses. And his run in the Manila was good, but I, I do think this is a tougher spot and a tough spot for deterministic. Next on the list is Carson's run, though, Matt. And I think Carson's run of the possible long shots of the horse that are probably going to be six to one, eight to one, maybe even higher is the one that interests me the, the most. He's also trained by Christophe Clement. And uh, he ran in the Breeders' Cup last year because of some good performances at both Saratoga and Woodbine on the turf. Uh, he's come back with two races. And uh, after a troubled run at Aqueduct, he, he really picked it up last time at Monmouth Park. Yeah, a nice prep race, uh, as it turns out, Brian, as uh, as the winner of the Tale of the Cat Stakes at Monmouth Park, uh, which is uh, also a race that uh, uh, Izzy Dora was fourth in. Yeah, Izzy, Di Izzy Dioro set the, the, the lead in that uh, tail of the cat at Monmouth Park. So Carson's run ran by and won easily. I think Carson's run can fit with this field on a class level. Maybe uh, one or two of the Europeans are going to prove too tough. But uh, Carson's run is interesting as at least how he relates to the other Americans for me coming off a nice um, confidence building win last time in the tail of the cat. All right, Matt, we only got two left. Royal Majesty. Uh, Royal Majesty, there's a lot to like. Just like uh, Diego Velasquez, he's a son of Frankel. And um, uh, he's looked good in winning. But then when he gets to the stakes race, it's just not quite good enough. He's actually 0 for 3 now in the stakes races. Yeah, winner of an allowance race at Keeneland at the spring meeting. Uh, third in that very, very tough field in the Penine Ridge. And fourth... Uh, in the Belmont Derby, uh, that makes him up against it in this particular field. Yeah, not far off in those races. If, if, if he can just get something or get, get the right trip or something, maybe. But uh, yeah, there's not enough there to say, oh, all of a sudden, uh, Royal Maj Majesty's going to get it done for trainer Belmont in this field. Number eight is another interesting horse, Matt. White Palomino, he's only run four times the son of Kittens Joy for trainer Chad Brown, I mentioned Flavian Pratt getting on him, not the Shug McGahey uh, two horse in here, which is interesting in its own right. He's only won one of the four, but I think he's run well in all four races. Yep. Uh, 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 racing out on the front end, that makes him, uh, always makes him a threat. Just missed by a head in the Belmont Derby and just missed by a head in the Penine Ridge. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you don't see that every day. He was second by a head in both of those nice turf races. Uh, at Aqueduct, and uh, certainly a horse you can't discount here. Maybe um, with the other horses to bet, uh, the two, three, four, White Palomino, Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt has some odds in here. You don't say that very often about that uh, combination. All right, Matt, that's the uh, Whitney and the Saratoga Derby, two of the three grade one races at Saratoga. Let's get right to our top picks. I want you to go first, and you'll start with the Whitney, sir. All right. Uh, hey, uh, we've talked about the quality of this field. We've talked about national treasure being in the field, being the top thoroughbred in the country. That absolutely, Brian, makes him the horse to beat. But he's going to come with uh, very short odds in my eyes. So with this big field, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a shot against him. I'm gonna I'm gonna land on Bright Future, a horse. Uh, who, uh, as I mentioned earlier, had a really good prep in that Salvatore Mile. He'll have to make a little bit of a step up to beat National Treasure or get some help in trips or something, but I'm willing to take a shot with him at, at uh, uh, I think, what will be appealing odds. Matt, I, I, we are on the same page here, Whoa. Whitney. I, I, everything you just said, um, I, I agree with. Uh, National Treasure is the horse to beat. Um, let's see what that early pace looks like in the Whitney. There's a big field. There are potential speed horses in here. I, I just want to take a shot against them at, I don't know, six to five, seven to five in a 12, good 12 horse field. Bright Future was the horse I landed on as well. I, I really like the one thing you didn't mention. I really like his races over the track at Saratoga. I think that's something uh, to talk about as well. Bright Future still looks like a horse with a bright future he's five years old but um uh you know he missed a lot of time early in his career and liked everything i've seen uh the last year plus from bright future let's see if he can get it done 
in his biggest race yet. Well, he was in the Breeders' Cup Classic, but uh, hopefully this will be his biggest performance yet in the Whitney. How about the Saratoga Derby, Matt? Saratoga Derby, I think I alluded to it in the in our rundown for the Saratoga Derby. I am very excited to bet on Legend of Time after that really bad trip, which, uh, which cost him any chance to win. I think he's going to be tough to beat in the Saratoga Derby. You're on Appleby. I'm on O'Brien. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, Legend of Time certainly has a big shot. And I think there are others in here. Carson's run, White Palomino. But Diego Velasquez, I, I just have a feeling from a class standpoint, might be too good. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. And he has run a few poor races over in Europe as well. So you never know for sure. But uh, Diego Velasquez for me. Uh, coming over for his first race in America in the Saratoga Derby. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Well, as you can tell, there is so much going on. Uh, uh, big races like the Whitney and the Saratoga Derby with uh, uh, certainly implications as, uh, for the rest of the year and the Breeders' Cup. Uh, so uh, looking forward to uh, this weekend of racing at Saratoga. And as always, I want to thank our Horse Center fans for watching the show. Yeah, thank you for watching every week. We sure do appreciate it. Turn on those notifications. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, do, do that to the Horse Racing Nation channel here on YouTube. Leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up. It all helps. Special thanks to Candace Curtis, our friend in the Louisville office for the race graphics. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And how about Timeform US for their excellent pace projections that Matt and I use every week on the show. Most of all, though, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week. I think next week we have Arlington Million to talk about. We also might do a little early preview for what looks to be a very interesting Travers. So don't miss that next week on Horse Center. Until